What's up, Buzznet? In reference to the podcast. Back again for a murder Monday. Back from the dead. Well, not really, but... We feel like we're getting to that point, though. Yeah. It is an hour after my bedtime. And it's plenty of hours past yours. <laughs> As you yawn. I don't know my day's off. Although even on my days off, I'm usually asleep by like 10. Yeah. Or I'm at nap, my nap phase. <laughs> All right. I'm Amanda. I'm Heather. And today on Murder Monday, we're going to talk about the murder of Erica Hill. So, my sources are Morbidology and Wikipedia. Uh, probably get used to that. <laughs> and spoiler alert, she was murdered. <laughs> she was. Uh, and Heather has heard some of this because I was doing the research while we were sitting here today. And it is horrible. It is. So, (laughs) if you have the option to not have to listen to it right before bed. Uh, Don't. Yeah. (laughs) So, Erica Hill was born in 1992, but there was no actual date of birth listed on Wikipedia or Morbidology. Erica was living with her grandmother until she passed, um, and at this time, Erica moved in with her mother's cousin, Taylin, and Taylin eventually adopted Erica. Apparently, Erica was her grandmother's favorite, which may have led to abuse from Taylin. Taylin abused her other children's as children's, <laughs> her other children as well, but Erica took the brunt of the abuse. According to her sister, Kiara, Erica could do no right. And this is one of the parts I've already told you. So, get ready for it again. Um, ow. At times, Taylin would make Erica stand on one foot, and she would beat the other foot until it bled. Taylin would carry an extension cord with her, which she would use to whip Erica. Oh. Yeah. Ima- don't even imagine that. <laughs> um, she starved Erica, and Erica was described as being gray in complexion by Kiara. At one point, Taylin Taylor- struck Erica's hand with a hammer and took her to the emergency room. When asked to change into a hospital gown, Taylin took Erica home because she did not want the medical staff to see the other injuries on her body. So, <laughs> real great. On February 26, 2007, two men reported to police that they saw what appeared to be charred legs of a partially clothed body of a teenage girl in the entrance of a vacant building in Gary, Indiana. Local police said that it was evident the young girl lived a tragic and traumatic life. She had 170 varying stages of scarring over her body and face. All of her teeth had been knocked out. Her cause of death was suffocation, but she had also sustained blunt force and stab wounds. Due to the condition of the body, the color of eyes and clothing, except pink underwear, could not be identified. Following the discovery of the body, police looked through missing persons reports, and an artist created a composite sketch of her likeness in an attempt to identify the body, but to no avail. The girl became... The girl found became known as the Lake County Jane Doe, which I typed wrong and typed Lakey County. (sighs) All right. So the body wasn't identified until 2015, eight years after it was found. Oh, my. Yeah. Uh, This is when Kiara Hill, Erica's sister, went to police and said the body belonged to her sister, who was 15 at the time of death. Kiara said Taylin ordered her and her two siblings, Joshua and Sierra, uh, to stuff Erica's body into plastic garbage bags. This was after she called them into the bathroom and showed them Erica's lifeless body. She had been beaten with a heavy object. Asphyxiated? Thank you. With a cloth, (laughs) which was still in her mouth, and then she was stabbed. So... The children did as they were told, and they dragged her body into the garage where the body remained until the smell of decomposition 
became too hard to ignore. But yeah. like, could she not like choose one way to do it? Like, she had to keep switching. I don't know. It didn't it didn't really say. Um. So. Taylin then forced her children to carry Erica's body from the garage to the family van. They drove to Chicago and dumped her underneath an overpass. Taylin pulled all of her teeth out and set her on fire in an attempt to make it dif- difficult to identify her. Oh, so her teeth... So that didn't happen while she was still alive. No. Oh, whenever you said, like, her teeth were knocked out, I'm like, oh, my God. Yeah, no. Um, so she was doing that to try to cover up her tracks. That yeah, so that she wouldn't get be found. Get rid of fingerprints and dental records. Yeah. Um, there were second thoughts. <laughs> no shit. No. I'm oh. not I'm not trying to be mean, but this is, like, it's funny. There were second thoughts as the thought of an elderly person finding the body and having a heart attack came up. Jesus. That's what they were concerned about. Not the fact that they just murdered their sister. Yeah. Well, their mother murdered her. Um, well, was it their sister? Or? She was an adoptive sister. Oh, okay. So. Um, but they were family beforehand, weren't they? Yeah. Erica's mother had issues with substance abuse, so she was living with her grandmother. Oh, and so then like the mother was never actually, so it wasn't her actual mother that no, did. No, no. Her grandmother then passed, and she moved in with Taylin, and Taylin ended up adopting her. Okay. And, okay, so they were worried about an old person finding the body and having a heart attack, which really is not going to be my first thought if I just dumped a body. I'm sorry. No, I'd be like, oh shit, hopefully nobody finds it. Yeah. Um. So they then moved the body to... Gary, Indiana. I guess there's no old people in Gary, Indiana. I feel like that's all that is there, because it's not like a historic town. I don't think so. I think it is. Oh, I don't know. They had something on the Disney Channel about it the one time. <laughs> okay. Um, is that even close to Chicago? Yes. That's where I stayed when I went to Chicago the first time. Oh. Which is why I don't think it's historic. <laughs> but, I don't know, because I spent a lot of time on AIM talking to your cousin. So. Fun times. Yeah, who I don't talk to anymore because he quote-unquote lost my number. Didn't know who I was anymore. Who else has this area code that I have? He is not that bright. <laughs> Hi, Joey, if you're listening. <laughs> He's a dad now. Oh, good for him. Not biologically. Oh. That, wasn't it her... It's like her niece or something. Yeah. They well, they finally did were allowed to adopt her. Yeah. Well, hopefully they treat her better than They're fucking better. Erica was treated. I'll so knock his teeth out. <laughs> you hear that, FBI? <laughs> <laughs> um, I'll do it with love. Okay. <laughs> Whatever floats your boat. All right. So Kiara said after Erica's death, Taylor became less abusive. Using her hands to strike them as opposed to objects. Well, so she didn't get much better. No. After seeing a drawing by the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children of the burned body found in Gary, Indiana, Kiara said she was immediately taken back to the incident. She told her therapist about it, who urged her to tell police. Which, I, I don't know. I have a lot of questions, but... Like, I get the whole, like patient doctor like confidentiality but if they come admit to murder well she didn't murder her she just helped dump the body the mom no Kiara. oh i thought you said the mom went to therapy no 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 kiara the sister kiara. yeah like i'm sorry she admitted that like her mother committed murder like i still feel like you should call the cops i don't know i don't know what the laws are there but i mean if she like, cause if you're a harm to others, they can, but cause it's not one of those like if you if you see something, say something. <laughs> yeah. So I don't know. Um, it's weird, but Taylor was working as an aide in the special education department at Madison School District. 
When she was arrested and asked about Erica, she claimed the teen had run away in 2009, which is when investigators then informed her that Erica's body had been found in 2007 and had now been identified. People, when she was arrested, when Taylin was arrested, the mom, people were like shocked because she had never abused anybody in front of other people. Oh, she only did it behind closed doors. Yeah. And they, like, she worked with special education students and was great with them. So, I don't know. So, Taylin was arrested on September 14th, 2015 and charged with first degree reckless homicide in addition to six additional charges of child abuse. And she was reportedly on suicide watch after being arrested. In July 2016, Taylin pleaded guilty to three reduced charges, including child neglect and abuse. On November 7, 2016, she was sentenced to 20 years in prison. And that's what I have on her. I hope she serves all 20 years. But we know. I hope somebody makes her her bitch. Oh my god. Allegedly. She deserves it. Yeah, it's, it's pretty... I hope she gets some help in jail. I hope she feels remorse, at least, for what she did. Yeah, I don't know. We could write to her. I'm gonna pass. <laughs> <laughs> like, hard fucking pass. <laughs> oh. Oh, maybe I'll start writing to Dennis Rader. No. <laughs> no. Uh, tell him he looks like my best friend's <laughs> And then he'll send back, I am your best friend's dad. <laughs> oh, speaking of, his daughter's book comes out in two days. Yeah? So, yeah. Also, I saw a People magazine article where it was like, I wish I wasn't in this club of serial killers kids or something. I was like, I mean, duh. Nobody. <laughs> I don't think anybody wants to be in yeah. that category. But... I, I do have... Just do the world a favor and don't turn out like your dad. Yeah. I do have her book pre-ordered on Audible. Because I had a free credit before I was canceling my account. And it was like, if you cancel your account, you'll lose your free credit. So, I was like, well, there aren't any books that I'm, like, dying to read. <laughs> or dying to have read to me. Yeah. So... I was like, well, if I can use it on the pre-order for her book, I'm going to, and it, I could. So, I'm super excited to get it. Um, yeah. So, we don't have our next episodes planned. <laughs> um, but, we'll announce them on Instagram, which is in reference to podcast. Um, wow, this was a really short episode. I think we're only at like 12 minutes, maybe 13. Well, as long as it's over 10. <laughs> <laughs> I can't edit anything. <laughs> um, anyway, Instagram in reference to podcast. Twitter in reference to. Uh, Gmail at in reference to podcast at gmail.com. We want your paranormal stories, true crime stories. Want to know what you want to hear. Or if you have any, like, weird things that have happened. Yeah, tell us. Um, obviously, we don't mind doing short stories, because they're fun. Um, nice to have short ones once in a while. Yeah. I promise that I have now a month to research some longer topics. ones. <laughs> yeah. So, we'll see. I'll start looking into what I want to cover. Um... I'll just reference my list. Yeah. Heather has like 1,700 pages of topics. I'm still waiting for the one I asked for. I have that one written. It just, I can't figure out how to word it. Oh. It doesn't sound stupid. <laughs> oh. Is it a short one? Then? That one's going to be a real short one. Oh. Well, then maybe you could do like Pennsylvania. That's what I was thinking. I could literally just read it out of my weird Pennsylvania book because it's in there. Okay, well, that's complete plagiarism. <laughs> but there's, I could get all kinds of ideas for Pennsylvania that are short stories out of there. 
Is the town that's on fire haunted? Centralia? Yeah. I don't know. I know that's where they got the idea for Silent Hill. Okay, but... (laughs) I don't know. I can look into that one, too. I I really want to go there. Except I'd be that person that falls through the ground. You're not allowed to go in there anymore. I don't care. I want to go. (laughs) I'm going to escape out of the town like the guy in Dark Tourist. (laughs) And go to the... They call it the entrance of hell. And cook some eggs. Yeah. Yeah. What? I was like, that would not be I want to know how thing. he held that and then pulled it out without burning the shit out of his hands. I want to know why he thought eggs. Again, another person that's never been to a campfire. <laughs> Roast some damn marshmallows, man. That would have been, for, first of all, would have been way, way easier to, like, duct tape sticks together than to get a metal pole. <laughs> And put a frying pan on the end. Yeah. (laughs) Uh, Anyway. um, Yeah, that city. Yep, that city will never be haunted, though, because nobody's nobody's there. there. (laughs) Oh, that's crazy. It's haunted by the vast nothingness. Yeah, by the tallest indoor Ferris wheel. Yeah, got seriously watch Dark Taurus. It's so it's so worth it. <laughs> there's only eight episodes so far. I hope I'm ready I for season two. Yeah, I hope there's more. Um, write Netflix a letter. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna write them an email. Add it to the list. Yep. Uh, so, and tell them to stop giving away money <laughs> for stupid stuff. Well, at least. At least Sugar Rush was, like, legit bacon. Yeah, not nailed it. You're going to get a whole shitload of money for not being able to do anything. (laughs) I could go and nailed it and win, maybe. I could not. You're telling me that you couldn't even attempt to do some of that shit? Yeah. Can you read a recipe? Because I feel like that's where everybody goes wrong. (laughs) Yeah, I can. I feel like because they're like, oh, I can just skip this step to save time. Yeah. I'll just nuke my chocolate for three minutes in the microwave. Yeah, as soon as she died, I was like, you can't put that kind of chocolate in the microwave. Especially with milk in it. And then they're like, they make melting chocolate for a reason. They're like, is something burning? Or the one that's like, I'm just going to put my isomalt in the microwave. That'll heat it up quicker. Oh, people. Oh. Well, I uh, thing is, I could do it. But I couldn't do it in the time frame they give you. <laughs> yeah. Like, I could not bake cupcakes and have them decorated in, like, 45 minutes. That's not even enough time for me to get all my ingredients out and mix them and put them in the oven. That would be, like, when the cake pop challenge would be like, um, excuse me, where's the cake pop maker? <laughs> for real. Uh, no, yes, no. I was like, no, no, no. I know there's a cake pop ma- maker. I saw it on Sugar Rush. <laughs> Which is also a Netflix show, so I know you guys have it around here somewhere. <laughs> and they had, anytime they needed something, it was like right there. They had an ice cream maker, pizza boxes, <laughs> crates. Where's the cake pop maker? <laughs> uh, Sugar Rush was a good, a, a nice easy binge. Yeah, that mm-hmm. let us down at the end because they made it sound like there was another episode. Yeah. Even though we were both like, okay, we're going to finish binging this. And then we'll watch it, and we're like, oh, there's still another episode. Oh, nope. nope. No, there's not. <laughs> so. All right. Well. Did I? S- I don't think I said Patreon. Did you? I don't know. I don't think so. So, uh, we'd love to have you support us in the podcast in Wikipedia by becoming a Patreon donor at patreon.com backslash in reference to. Um. You, you can get a twofer. Or you could be We Are Groot. Or you could... Allegedly. Allegedly join Team 10. Or join the Punny 20. It's pun intentional. It was very pun intentional. <laughs> like, pun, space, intentional. <laughs> oh, alright, well. Farewell, friends, until next time. <laughs>